Hello everyone and welcome to Nancy's Magic Touch and DIYs. In today's video, I am going to share with you how to transform three thrift store items into items that you will never want to part with. I am absolutely in love with the result of this transformation and you want to stick around to see it. So grab a nice warm cup of tea and let's get started. found this cute little frame. It has a um, ceramic tile on top of it and little hooks and I'm going to remove these hooks. I found this at my local thrift store uh, by the way. I'm just going to go ahead and remove uh, the hooks and I'm going to give a little sanding where those hooks were just to get rid of the residue that's there. Now I'm just going to wipe off all that dust. I'm going to give two good coats of my homemade chalk paint to this piece, letting a uh, dry in between. I'm making sure that I'm getting into the crease and try to get some paint in there. I went on my Cricut Design Space and created myself a design as I'm going to need them in each one of my projects. You're going to need some cardstock and some silk paper. I think that's what they're called. We use them in gift bags. And you're going to cut um, that silk paper a little bit smaller than your cardstock paper and you're going to tape it all around and try to make it as straight as you can while you tape it on your cardstock. I went ahead and um, printed that on my inkjet paper and I had to let it dry for quite some time. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off. Now I am going to apply um, this design to my little board that I have here and I am going to use some Mud Podge to uh, place it. So I'm going to put Mud Podge with my paintbrush. Now I am going to gently apply uh, some pressure just to stick it in place with my uh, paintbrush. Now I'm going to make this piece look nice and rustic. So it's okay if there's a bit of wrinkle or a little bit of tear or anything like that. It'll be just fine. It does not have to be perfect and you may need to reapply some Mud Podge um, in order to stick the rest as dry pretty quickly. So just um, reapply as needed. Mm -hmm. 
Now I am going to gently apply some Mod Podge all over the piece. Um, now I noticed that the ink smeared a, little, smeared a little bit, but that's okay. Again, I'm making a rustic piece with this, so I'm gonna try to not smear it too much, but it's not gonna make a difference. So, and I'm going to apply the Mod Podge all the way down to the piece of the uh, ceramic tile. And once this is dry, I'm gonna do another coat. Now I'm going to use some of my black wax by Bear, and I'm just gonna use a small brush and I'm going to apply it especially in the corners and in the crease of the piece. And you can make this as light or as dark as you like. Now I'm going to use some paper towel and I'm going to wipe some of this off. I'm going to add some more, especially in the creases areas as I want those to pop up a little bit more. Now I'm going to do the same thing around the tile uh, and I'm gonna use the same method and I'm gonna apply, wipe it off and if I need more, just reapply until I get the color that I like. Now I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm just gonna bring some of that white back. Because I want it more black into the crease area, I'm going to give another uh, light um, brush coat of white paint around the frame. And I'm going to sand just a little bit more, very lightly. I am not going to use the sandpaper on the ceramic tile at all. Now I'm going to put two of these hooks. I got these at the dollar store and they're nice and heavy but I wanna make sure that they are permanent. Um, they do have this sticky um, thing on the back, but that's not sufficient uh, for me. I just wanna make sure that they stay on. So I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue for permanent hole, but I'm going to use some hot glue to have instant hole as well. And here's the final result. How cute is this? You can use this for multi-purpose, like your kitchen tools, your keys, your oven mitts. Uh, it's endless.
I bought this magazine rack at my local thrift store and I'm going to completely transform it. So I went ahead and give it a really good sanding. And now I am going to use uh, my chalk paint and I'm going to give three good coats of chalk paint to this piece. Now it's all painted and dry, three coats, but I don't want this to be nice and white and crisp like this. I want to make this nice and rustic looking. So I'm using my Benjamin Moore uh, stain, uh, name Alexandria, with my um, brush. And I am going to randomly just um, put some of this stain um, here, there, and everywhere on the piece. Now I'm going to take a sand block and I am going to randomly sand some of this off. I want to keep a little bit on it, uh, but I want to make it very rustic. So I just want it to kind of, sh for it to show through, if that makes sense. And I'm also going to sand more heavy in certain areas so that the mahogany color um, that's underneath the white comes through as well. I went in the garage and I cut myself two piece of baseboard uh, planks that I had left over. And now I am going to take my chalk paint and I am going to give that two good coats of paint on both sides. Now I'm going to take some sandpaper and I am going to uh, sand a little bit to give it an aged look, just to make it a little bit more rustic. Now I'm giving these a really good wipe with uh, some uh, baby wipe. Now I'm going to put my boards in place. I had cut it the width to fit this area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, of my um, Gorilla Glue and apply on these little uh, rindle. And then I'm going to also put some hot glue to give me that instant hold that I need. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to take some of my black um, wax and apply on some areas of this board to try to match the rest of the magazine rack. So I'm just going to gently apply um, in different spots and then I am going to wipe it off and I'm going to continue doing that until I get the look that I desire. And I'm going to do that on both sides.
I have this oval shape piece of wood that I had painted before for a project but didn't uh, use it. So I'm going to use it for this project, but I am going to um, repaint it to make sure that my color matches my magazine rack. So I am going to paint this uh, one coat only on the front and two coats on the back. Now I'm taking another one of my design that I made uh, to fit that oval shape. I'm going to cut that up. And as I did previously um, on the other project, I'm going to do the same thing, apply the Mod Podge, put my design over top and carefully um, smooth it out with my uh, paintbrush and I let it dry and give it a second coat. Now I'm going to put a full coat over it. Now I'm doing a second coat and letting it dry. Also, like the previous project, I'm using some of my black wax to age this sign. Now that my oval sign is ready, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that on one side of my magazine, right in the middle. And I'm going to apply it with some Gorilla Glue and also some um, hot glue to give me that instant hold. And here is the final result. I am totally in love with this magazine rack. You can use this for multi-purpose. It could be for magazines, it could be for slippers, it could be for towels in your bathroom. Um, it could be for so, so many things. But I have decided to use mine um, as a, a baking uh, holder. So I have my rollers and my baking sheets and my cutting board and my muffin pans all in that tray. So when I'm ready to bake, everything is there for me. I found these canister at my local thrift store and I could not resist them. I had a vision. So they came home with me.
I give those a really good wash and I fill them up with some paper and now I'm getting ready to paint them with chalk paint Rust-Oleum in the white linen and this takes quite a bit of coat. I actually ended up doing a three coats of uh, paint to each one of the jars and doing four coats to the jar covers. If you don't have um, a lazy Susan to do your project, I highly recommend you get one um, because it will make your life so much easier to just turn it around rather than trying to turn your piece uh, without touching it. And I always put some sort of a paper underneath so that way I can just kind of pull it off, gently uh, put it somewhere else and move on to my next project. Now I'm using some hair dry clay. Um, I picked this one because I just want, for the projects that I'm doing, um, it's just easier. So I'm just cutting a piece and I'm creating myself a nice uh, rectangle with it with my rolling pin and I'm gonna make it just a little less than a quarter of an inch just a nice thickness but first you gotta you know play with it to make it a little softer and then I am going to make a square um, no a rectangle um, sorry to match a size to every one of my cans. So my larger can will have a larger rectangle and my medium, a medium rectangle and my small can, a small rectangle. I'm just using a big knife to cut it up and I'm just highballing it um, because I am that brave. <laughs> but for you guys, um, somebody may want to measure. Um, so you go ahead and do that. But for me, I'm quite comfortable um, just guessing. Now I'm just taking a um, dishcloth and I am just rolling it um, like this to make myself a support for my can and the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want it to move and it's much much easier to work with. I'm using some serum wrap so a little piece of serum wrap to put over your canister And now I'm applying uh, that little rectangle that I just did over uh, my canister and I'm placing it just about where I want it. I realize that it's a little bit crooked and a little bit too big so I'm cutting some of it off. And I'm just going to mold it against my can and I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure so it takes the shape of my can and then I'm going to let that dry for um, 24 hours at least for now. Now I'm taking some of these little decorative, um, I can't remember what you call them, those little peg things. And I am going to go and put one of each corner of uh, my canister as so. So that way when this dries, it will um, have the holes in it. So when the clay is nice and hard, um, I will be able to remove them and glue them back in place. I ended up removing uh, the um, clay uh, away from the jar and turned it upside down to finish, uh, let it dry on the other side for another um, almost two days. 
Now that it's all nice and dry and all hard, um, I'm taking a, a nail file and I'm just um, carefully filing all the edges and all the side just to give it a very nice smooth um, finish. I also removed the little decorative uh, pegs that were in the corner. Now that these are all sanded, I'm just going to go ahead and paint them the same color as my jar in the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in white linen. And I am going to give um, two good coats of paint. I use some of these dollar store uh, plates to do my project. Make sure that you flip them around on the white side as I uh, found out that that yellow actually comes off into your paint. So I learned that very quickly. So make sure if you have any colored plates and if you don't want the color to come into your paint, just flip it around. Now, like the other projects, again, I have my three design, one for each one of my canister. And I am going to go ahead and apply these the exact same way I did with the other two previous projects. So I'm not going to explain um, in detail all these steps as you already um, seen it in the two previous uh, projects. Now the only difference in this project is I'm taking the nail file again just to remove any uh, paper uh, that's uh, exceeding the label. So I'm just going to file all that extra paper down. Now I'm going to take some rope 
and that ledge on the top I am going to fill that with rope to give it a really nice rustic look. So I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue right on the very top edge and I am going to go around and around and apply the rope until it gets to the bottom and put a little bit of glue to attach the rope to the bottom. So to my surprise, when I actually removed the tags um, from the canister to let it dry, they actually shrunk. So they are smaller than the can and does not fit properly, but that's okay. We are going to improvise. So I'm going to apply some Gorilla Glue because I need permanent hold on the very edge and I'm also going to put some hot glue as well for the instant hold um, while I wait for the permanent glue to dry. I really didn't think that these pieces would shrink because when I did remove it to dry on the other side that was still a little bit wet, they were really um, hard. So I didn't expect for this to happen. But that's okay, like I said, we can fix this. Now I'm just going to apply this in the area that I want in front of my canister and I am just going to hold it in place for a second to make sure that it holds properly. If you have any excess glue that's showing up on the sides, you can just pick them out with some tweezers. And I'm going to repeat for all my cans. So as you can see here, my label is actually giving me uh, like a space there, which is absolutely perfect to add a little bit of greenery to the front of the canister. I'm actually really uh, pleased uh, with this mistake, to be honest with you. And I probably will purposely uh, do this again to um, get this uh, result. Uh, for my next um, set of canisters. I am absolutely over the moon with the results of these canister. It's got my name on it, Nancy's Magic Touch. And I love the nice farmhouse rustic look that they have. These will be beautiful on my counter space. Well, that's it for this video, folks. I hope you really enjoyed it because I certainly really enjoy this transformation myself. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I would love to hear all your comments down below. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel yet, well, please do that. Until next time, have yourself a great day.